Aloha. Good morning from Hawaii. Everybody who's tuning in. We live yet? Good morning from Hawaii. And the sound works. Awesome. Well, thank you folks for tuning in and joining me here today. I don't need those. Here to celebrate the release and the launch of my new video course, Hawaiian Songs for Ukulele, we're going to be taking a look at a tune called Maui Girl. It's one of my favorites. It's kind of an, an old song. Um, I, did, I did a version of it in my Left Hand Technique course and, and top version, but I wanted to revisit it and put it in a new key that a lot of people don't play in a lot that's actually a really good key for the ukulele, something that sounds nice and fits in well. So we'll be having a look at that, not in any kind of rush. So if you guys have the time, please hang out and we'll just cruise through the song together, talk a little bit of story, maybe even I'll play a song or two. If you have any questions as we're going along, um, drop them in the chat. I've got the, the PDF download um, pinned in the chat. It's also in the description if you want to have a look at that. If you're more advanced, I invite you to challenge yourself and try and just follow along Hawaiian style, which is just watching and listening and trying to figure out what's going on. And that's something that I kind of uh, emphasize in the course and in the songs that we learn. I'm Italian. I talk with my hands a lot, so I'm going to move my water further away. <laughs> so all I need is to spill water on my floor. All right. So I'm going to just, just so we have a reference, I'm going to play through the song kind of how I normally play it when I'm performing, just kind of go for it and sing it and maybe play a little instrumental just so you can get a, a feel for the song. Um, mm. And we'll start there and then we can talk about, probably talk about how to play the melody next. We got Tennessee, London, North Cal, Vancouver. Awesome. Love to see the diversity of everybody tuning in from all over the place. Okay, so Maui Girl in the key of A. I'm a lefty too. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Well, I love a pretty Maui girl. She lives at Waikapu. Rosy cheeks, pearly teeth, and lovely nut brown hair. Her waist is oh so slender. Her opu to much a nui nui. All the wahine I ever did aloha. Sweet Mariah beats them all. My love for you, who a hikiak no, your love for me, who a pal I know. Don't tell mama, kuri kuri, she'll tell papa, aluli luli, nui nui kiri kia with me now. Here's a little instrumental. Nut brown hair, her waist, 
so so slender her pull too much and win away all of a hine ever did aloha sweet mariah beats them all my love for you who he can't know your love for me who bella no don't tell mama i could she'll tell papa a little little no we know if you can with me now Nui nui pilikia with me now Nui nui pilikia with me now That's Maui Girl by Sylvester Kalama. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Turn this guy down a little bit. I don't live stream probably nearly enough. So I don't know where to exactly position my ukulele. But thanks for checking this out we're going to be learning the song today going to walk through the melody and the chords and the strumming um we'll talk for a second about the hawaiian meanings that are in there though it's pretty straightforward um this is what's known as a hapa haole song which is like in a hawaiian style but sung with mostly english lyrics um in the course that we are celebrating i should have brought a, a little party blower or something and those the songs in that in that course they're all Hawaiian language songs in classic Hawaiian Hawaiian songs. This is known as a hapa haole song. A little bit easier crossover, especially for folks who are just getting into Hawaiian music. I thought we'd start with something that had some English reference points. And then once we talk about uh, maybe some of the the real rough translations of the Hawaiian words, we'll talk about turning it into a solo arrangement for the intermediate or advanced players who want to take it up a notch. We'll probably we won't go into super detail on exactly how I was playing like my instrumental there. That was just me pulling stuff out of thin air. But but um, we will talk about the, the approach and how you think about putting that all together. So buckle up and let's cruise for an hour or two here and have a look at the song. If you're so inclined to check out the new course, there's a link down in the stream description. And it's also right on the front page of liveukulele.com, my website. You can check it out. It's $10 off until tomorrow at midnight because this has been launch week as I'm sharing sharing it out there with everybody after that price goes up to the normal $50. Hey, hey, Dominator. Thanks for tuning in. And thanks to everybody. We got Germany and Maryland and Florida, Austria, Pittsburgh, Maine, Australia, Belgium. This is great. This is great. Um, so let's dive in. Let's have a look at how to pick the melody for the beginning players out there or folks who maybe haven't tried playing melody before. It's not as scary as you think. And especially with a song like this, there's a lot of room to kind of bend the rules and interpret. Because what we're doing with the melody here is we're trying to emulate the singing. I just sang the song. And what we're going to do with the picking part is instead of singing it, we're just going to try and play what you sing on the ukulele. And so because of that, and because of the way that your voice phrases things, there's a lot of room for interpretation as you pick the notes. You don't have to get everything exactly as it's laid out. And if you're following along on the tab, it's a good guideline, but there are gonna be places, I, I know already, just cause I know myself, there are gonna be places where I, I teach it and I play it intuitively, not how it's written, where it, with slight changes to maybe how many times I pick the melody note, or where I change from one melody note to the other. I'm just following my ear. So for those of you who are familiar with the song, have heard it a number of times before and you have it in your head, it's gonna be a little bit easier to intuitively do that as well. If you're not familiar with the song, you can rewind um, if you like. And certainly if you're watching this at a later date, feel free, you know, pause and, and rewind and listen to my performance a couple of times or find a different reference recording. But like I said before, we're in the key of A. And so maybe some of these notes and the frets that we're going to play on are a little bit a little bit new um, for some of you folks, not something that a lot of people get to, but we don't move around that much. It's a pretty straightforward melody. Okay, so we're going to start on the open E string. I love a pretty, and we go to the second fret. I love a pretty then we go back to the open string and the first fret on the c string i love 
a pretty Maui. And then if you have a low G, you're going to go down to the second fret on the top string. If you have a high G, you can play this too, because the alternative for high G is you're going to cheat the note up an octave. It's not going to sound exactly in line with where you might expect it, but it's the same note. And this is the only place in the song, I believe, that this happens and we have to cheat a little bit for the high G players. But I think it's worth it to play in this interesting key. And if you don't like it, you can transpose it at a later time. So that first line, I love a pretty Maui girl. I love a pretty Maui girl. Right, and if you play a high G, that, that low note is gonna sound like that. So for high G players, it's gonna sound Right? It's not, it still sounds musical. If you're familiar with the song, it might not sound exactly like you'd expect. But like I said, that's the only time in the song where we're going to need to kind of massage it a little bit. Okay. Main thing when you're playing this kind of a song, it's a fast song, which helps with the timing. A lot of times when you're playing faster, it's easier to feel like your timing is good and you're playing the notes in the right places. But it's also easy to tend to rush. So as you're playing the melody, you need to imagine that you're sitting on the bed of the rest of the song, but maybe somebody's playing a strumming ukulele part, maybe there's a bass player. And when you're playing through the melody, you wanna be patient and make sure that you're giving each note its full value. So as I'm, as I'm playing through, if I think about how fast I'm gonna play, if my tempo is like this. I love a pretty Maui. I want to make sure that I'm trying to give each of those notes their full duration. A lot of times holding a note can seem kind of scary, but it's really the best thing for the music to make sure that you're actually keeping things in line. All right. And if you have any questions as we're going along, throw them down in the um, the chat. It's not the comments. It's the chat, the live chat. And I will get to them um, when it's appropriate to take a pause. But let's move along to She Lives at Waikapu. Now we're gonna move down to the bottom string open for she lives and, and we go to the fourth fret. Um, you play this with your pinky or your ring finger. Like a lot of times if you're trying to stay one, two, three, four fingers and kind of hold with this general guideline of one finger per fret, you'll play it with your pinky finger. And there's not really anywhere you need to get to, so it's probably good practice to play this with your pinky finger anyways. She lives at Y. And then we go down to the second fret, the open string, and then we move on to the E string, second fret. She lives at Y. Kapu. All right. And if you're following along on the lead sheet tab um, and you're feeling bored, turn over the lead sheet tab, close the window or hide the window. So you're just following me and trying to um, force your challenge yourself to pick this up just kind of manually by watching and listening. So those first two lines, I love a pretty Maui girl, she lives at Waikapu. I love a pretty Maui girl, she lives at Waikapu. And that's gonna be a hold note. We're gonna stay there for a while. Um, as far as the timing goes and in keeping with the the time and not rushing where you want to hold a note for longer i find that it's really helpful to count in the spaces when i'm playing i don't tend to rush as much if there's stuff going on i tend to be fine but when i want to know that i'm going to be coming in at the correct place the next time i need to play something after i've held for a while a lot of times i'll count in my head all right so for instance the way that i have this song written out it's kind of I, I started to, to tab it, to transcribe it in double time of this. So everything was kind of eighth notes. And then I realized that, no, when I count it, it's kind of at that 155 fast tempo. And so I decided to space everything out so we'd have a little bit more room as we were looking at it. But if we're counting, one, two, three, I love two, three, a pretty two, three, Tima, we girl, two, three, she lives. And it's kind of, for this song, it's not as obvious and as needed because you're moving along kind of quickly. But a lot of times if when you're not picking a note and there's a beat going by, it helps me at least to count the beat, at least in my head, so that I know that there's something happening there and I'm not going to jump on the tendency to rush ahead. 
Okay, now let's go to, well, let's, let's play through that, that first line one more time. So one, two, three, I love a pretty Maui girl, two, three. She lives by Kapu, two, three, four, one, two, three. All right, and I should mention that the very first note we play, I, I love, is a pickup note. And what that means is you're gonna borrow a little bit of time before the one beat. So if I'm counting one, two, three, four, one, we expect the one to be the hard count, to be the, um, the note that gets the timing emphasis. But when you have a pickup, something happens before that. So in this case, we have a quarter note before we get to the first official one beat. So we're gonna play that on the four. So it's gonna be one, two, three, I love. And then love is our first one. And that's what happens with a pickup. And with this song and the way the melody kind of lays out, you can think of almost each measure kind of has that four pickup. So it's like four and then the one, four and then the one. And if you know how to read um, rhythm notation on the standard notation, you can follow along. But if you just think of it as counting, one, two, three, I love, uh, I love two, three. A pretty Maui girl, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. You have that four, one rhythm push throughout a lot of the song. So let's continue to with rosy cheeks and pearly teeth and lovely nut brown hair. All right, that's our next bit. And if you notice, we're going to be playing the same note repeatedly. We're going to be playing second fret on the E string and fourth fret on the E string. And we're gonna be just going back and forth with that same rhythm pattern, four, one, right? So. That's rosy cheeks and pearly teeth. With rosy cheeks and pearly teeth and. And that's our last second fret before we move to the open E string. Lovely. Second fret again, nut. And then we swap down to the first fret on the C string, brown, and then open E string, hair. Okay, so all together, with rosy cheeks and pearly teeth and lovely nut brown hair. All right, and so this is the main first part of the song where I feel like what's written out doesn't quite, and what I'm playing here doesn't quite capture what's happening in the song. If I'm jamming with rosy cheeks and pearly teeth and lovely nut brown hair, for the rosy cheeks part, there's a lot of vocal movement that's going on in there. And actually when I was trying to figure out the song, it's one of those things that's like, well, what note am I actually singing? And so I took kind of the closest approximation of this is mostly what's happening without making it terribly complex to look at. So with this kind of a part, what you can do is you can play something that's not exactly what's written. And what I would tend to play is the chromatic movement to make it a little more bluesy, a little bit more out sounding as you're playing. You could go instead of the second fret, maybe you play the second fret the first time with rosy cheeks and you play the third fret instead. And this is not necessarily in the key of A, right? That's a G natural note. We're supposed to have a G sharp note, supposed to. And, and by playing the G, we get kind of a bluesy sound because that's the flat seven of the key. We have A, G sharp, and then G. If we go down a whole step from that root, it's always going to be the flat seven note. So you can play that with rosy cheeks and pearly teeth and lovely nut brown hair. Lovely nut brown hair is a little bit more set. I feel like that is a um, better articulated part as it lands on the instrument. I feel confident that that's kind of how I sing it. But that other part, you can really move it around a bit. And so if, if like I'm playing a solo, this is kind of a tangent here, but if I'm playing a solo arrangement, a lot of times what I'll do is in order to capture the E that I'm playing, I don't wanna have the E sound because that's an E7 there as we're picking that melody. 
-hmm. I play an E and I just kind of shimmy it down one fret and then back for that entire part to capture that whole thing. It's really simple. So with rosy cheeks and pearly teeth and lovely nut brown hair, that would be kind of how I would approach it. And so when you're picking the melody, you can do the same thing just by playing that third fret and fourth fret. All right. If you're just tuning in, if you're just joining us, um, feel free to throw questions in the comments, the in the chat. The pinned chat at the top has the download link if you want to look at the transcription. Otherwise, just follow along. We're doing things kind of Hawaiian style today. Let's move on to... Uh, well, let's play from the top, and then we'll move on to her waist is also slender, right? And the reason I'm kind of belaboring the melody here and showing it to you slow is because with with the course Hawaiian Songs for Ukulele um, that is launching this week, you get ten dollars off if you go to the link in the description until tomorrow at midnight. With those video lessons, I tried to teach things so they could be self-contained and they wouldn't need a transcription, right? Because with Hawaiian style playing, a lot of us grew up just sitting in a Kani Kapila and watching and listening and not necessarily having a chord sheet in front of us. We would have to sit there and play everything wrong until we figured out how to do it right. Or we figured out by watching this guy, oh, he's playing this chord and then this chord and then this chord. Now you just, it's a different kind of relationship you have with the music because you're really engaged with the visual aspect of watching people and also listening. Whereas when you're looking at the page, you're only interpreting, right? You're interpreting what's on the page and then you have to create it here. When you're, when you're watching and listening, you can experience music in a very different way. And so I teach the melodies note by note so that folks who want to challenge themselves to kind of learn in that Hawaiian style way can do so because it's very, very valuable to learn a song in that way and to, you know, really understand it from an intuitive standpoint where you feel like, okay, I figured it out from scratch. I just watched and I learned how to play it. It's like when Jake came out with While My Guitar Gently Weeps, there were no tabs when that happened. We had to sit there and watch the video, rewind the video, watch the video, listen, see what was happening. And if you recall, the video was kind of bad quality. It was a really low resolution. So you couldn't see super clearly what he was doing. And so, you know, that's how a lot of people learn to play the ukulele. And that's what I try and bring folks who have a little bit more Western understanding where everything is very precise and laid out and you always have the tab, you know, relax. It's a, it's a YouTube live stream. You know, you're in your house by yourself. Play it and just try it and see if, it, if, if you can figure it out because you're not going to break anything by doing so. And especially with the technology that we have and you can replay the videos or play with along with the backing tracks, there's time to just experience this yourself and really slow down and get into the song. So that's why I'm taking my time here. I'm in no rush. Hope you folks can lay back and enjoy the same as me. All right. So I love a pretty Maui girl. She lives at Waikapu with rosy cheeks and pearly teeth and lovely nut brown hair. Let's try, try walking our way through that. Just the melody. One, two, three. I love... Sorry, I'm I'm confused on the timing dun, dun, because I'm I'm usually feeling it in double time. Mm -hmm. Okay, one, two, three. I love a pretty Maui girl. Two, three. She lives a wild couple. Two, three, four. One, two, three. With rosy cheeks, two, three, and pearly teeth, and lovely nut brown hair. Okay, and then from her waist is also slender, it's almost exactly the same as the first line. We're just changing things a little bit to fit the phrasing of the words, and that's what happens a lot when you are trying to pick a vocal melody as you end up adjusting things slightly to to match the words okay so her waist is also slender it's going to be almost the same one two three her waist is also slender right we don't go down to the low note 
Maui girl. We're leaving that out because we don't need it in this place where we are singing. Her waist is oh so slender. One, two, three. And then we go to the bottom string again. And this is a part where there are a lot of syllables happening here, and I'm just trying to approximate it. And if you wanted, you could really kind of just play it like she lives at Waikapu, because basically the melody is doing the same thing. Her opu too much, anui nui. We're playing the same curve of the melody. We're just playing more notes to kind of capture the syllables that you're singing in this case. So we're on the bottom string, open. Her opu. Fourth fret, too much. Second fret. Anui nui. Right, so I have it tabbed as one, two, three, four. But that can be awkward when you start picking the same note again and again and again. And if I was just playing it, I might not play it like that. Right, I kind of approximate it and get it close because at the end of the day, you're just trying to capture the melody. You're not trying to completely copy it exactly because it is a different thing. You're just trying to get the gist of it on the instrument. All right. Okay. And then let's get to the end of this page. This is the A part. This first page is the A part. Of all the wahine, we're going to do a similar-ish thing to what we did before with rosy cheeks where we were toggling back and forth from the second fret to the fourth fret on the E string. But in this situation, we are playing uh, more notes because we have more syllables again. Okay, so of all the vahine I ever did aloha. And then open string, sweet Mariah, two, four, A string. Okay, so let's try from her waist is also oh slender because that's kind of where we start with a, a new time around. Okay. One, two, three, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, that is the first page, the A part. You might think of it as kind of the verse and then the next part's the chorus, but not really. It's just kind of an A, A, B sort of a part. Okay, so that is the main body of the song, right? If you're just joining, um, we're just working through this song, Maui Girl. We're working on learning the melody, kind of Hawaiian style right now, just listening and watching and working our way through it. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for your comments. I am watching them as I come through. And um, yeah, if you can't tune in for the whole time, this will be posted up as a rebroadcast. So come back and check it out at a later time so you can hopefully benefit from the entirety of the lesson. Okay, but now let's play all the way through that first page um, and try it out. Remember, take it at your own pace. If you want to turn off my volume or pause the stream, that's fine. It will it will be here. And yeah, if I'm talking too much, you could mute me. <laughs> okay, so if we go, I love a pretty Maui girl from the top. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Her waist is oh so slender. Her opu, her opu, too much. Anui nui. One, two, three. Of all the vahine, 
I ever did aloha. Sweet Mariah beats them all. All right. That is the first page. If you have any questions, throw them in the chat and I will answer that. Good news is that the next part is shorter. It's less bars, but there are more notes and it's a little bit more interpretive. Okay. Because as, as we go through it, let me, let me play this B part singing it wise. So you have a, a reference for what we're going to be doing. Um, but it's a little bit more, more, more rhythmic and things going on. I don't know what, I don't know what that means. Um, but let's, let's try. So one, two, three, four. My love for you. Your love for me. Don't tell mama. She'll tell papa. So trying to capture that exactly with the melody picking is going to be tough. So you just need to approximate. Don't try and stress out with matching exactly the transcription if you're looking at that that's another reason to to flip the page over or close the window because it can drive you crazy trying to exactly match it up and it was driving me crazy as i made the sheet because it doesn't always exactly make sense it just is that human nuance of trying to match something and interpret something in a natural way on a completely different instrument voice and ukulele does not equate we have to make compromises okay so, my love for you, all E string. My love for you. And then we go, and the only difference is we go down to a first fret C sharp. And you can tell right there, I'm not exactly matching the syllables as I'm picking. Right, I'm only playing four notes there as opposed to there's six written on the page, if, if it matters. Okay, and then same thing, your love for me, your love for me. And then we go, Ooh, uh, two, four, open A string. Okay, and then don't tell mama is open A. Don't tell mama, a coolie coolie. You could probably just keep playing the open A string at this point, but I have a coolie coolie as a coolie. So it's one, two, and then second fret on the E string, and then one, two again, all on the open A, right? A, second fret E string, A. But that makes it kind of complicated, and that's not the idea here. So we don't want it to be complicated. So if you want, just don't tell mama, a coolie coolie, she'll tell papa, a -lo 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 -lo. and then you can play the last, the last line there. Okay, but she'll tell papa, a -lo 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 is the exact same thing just in a different spot over a different chord, which we will talk about in the solo arrangement as we get into it. The last line, Nui Nui Pilikia, um, second fret, Nui Nui, open, fourth fret, Kia, and then A string, with me, second fret, now. And then for that last one, the way that it's sung is a little bit late, so I put, I put the second fret to open string pull off, um, if you wanna play that, if not, you can just, but the pull-off kind of smears it together. So what you can do is you, for a pull-off, you hold on the fret, second fret, and then you're just gonna drag your finger downwards towards the floor until it pops off the string. And I'm not doing anything again with my picking hand. I'm just picking once, and then this hand as it pops off the string, kind of plucks it again. Right? So that's the picking melody. Take a minute with that. Um, take a deep breath. I'm going to take a sip of water. And we will cruise along. Once again, thank you for joining me. I am celebrating the release of Hawaiian songs for ukulele. It's my new course. We go through five songs in this style, though, of course, at your own pace because it's all pre recorded. And there are four videos per song. There's a a melody video lesson where you learn how to pick the melody similar to what we've just done. There is a chords and rhythm lesson along with a extensive look at how to pronounce the Hawaiian lyrics of the song. So if you want to just strum the chords and sing, you can play the correct chords and also sing the correct Hawaiian words. 
And then there are two video lessons per song that talk about how to solo arrange. And we'll talk about like a basic outline structure and then a more advanced version where, you know, we put some interesting techniques and talk about the different picking styles you can use to bring them to life. So for each, each of those five songs, there's the four lessons plus a couple of other lessons on the ends to kind of tie things together with general Hawaiian music concepts. So if you're interested in learning more about Hawaiian music, it is, I, I built it to be a great intro to Hawaiian music, but also to be interesting for more advanced players who want to jump into maybe playing these songs in a more advanced style. So hopefully there's something all across the spectrum for everybody. You can check it out. There's a link in the stream description. It's $10 off until tomorrow at midnight. So list price is normally 50 bucks, but it's going to be 39 um, today up through tomorrow for the launch. So that's that's my spiel. Thanks for tuning in. And if you have any questions as we go, throw them in the chat. But otherwise, thank you for tuning in. And Be I wanted, I've been looking at Beverly's chat um, from Calgary, Canada. Minus 30 with a frowny face. I was in Calgary in November. Um, went up with my girlfriend to meet her auntie who lives up in Calgary. And even in November, it was quite cold. It was above freezing one day. And this Hawaii boy was, yeah, was pretty cold the whole time. Um, but a beautiful place. I've never seen so much snow. I couldn't believe that flying in as far as you could see on the plains was white. <laughs> it was like, wow, that's not like, that's not like two inches of snow like I've seen dustings in other places. Um, this is like a foot of snow at least as far as you can see. It was amazing. It's completely different from anything I'd ever seen before. Okay, so let's move on now to talk about the chords of the song. Um, this, is, this is the point where it's gonna be a little bit more simple, apparently. But what I like to do, especially when teaching in this slower Hawaiian style, trying to help you kind of understand things and realize things organically and intuitively, is to talk about the timings of the chords as they relate to what's happening in the song. So that as you're going, if you can hold a beat and you can like feel the beat of the song, you can know where the chord changes are. Even if you don't have a chord sheet in front of you, you can just get a feel for, okay, it's going to be this long until we change chords and it's going to be this chord. And so the way we'll do that is I'll just, I'll just play through a couple bars and then we'll talk about what the chord timings are and we'll walk through the count together so you can see. And even if this is kind of basic, a lot of times it's interesting to look at a, at a song this way, even for me, because you don't, you don't necessarily think about it explicitly like oh how long does the chord actually last before i change you just do it or you play it or you follow the sheet and do what it says you can you can really learn a lot just by by breaking things down to this level okay so the first bit i love a pretty maui girl she lives at waikapu with rosy cheeks Curly teeth and lovely nut brown hair. Okay, we'll go to there and then we'll talk about what's happening. So especially when we have kind of the extended chord holds, it's nice to have to run through the bars in your head so you don't get lost of what's happening. Especially if like you're trying to hold down the rhythm and somebody else is maybe playing a solo, like like when I'm playing in my group, I'll play the chords and our slack key guitar player will play a solo. I have to keep track of how the song goes without singing it, right? The singing a lot of times is a nice reference point, but you gotta be able to also know, know the actual timings of the chords, okay? So we have one bar of A and our count is one, two, three, four. So it's a little bit fast, but we're gonna have A, one, two, three, four, and then D, one, two, three, four, and then back to A for four bars. So one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, and then back to D, now for two bars. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Okay, so that all together, um, now that you kind of know what timing to look for, have, have a listen. I love a pretty Maui girl. She lives at Waikapu. One, two, three, with roll. And then we're gonna move to E7. And E7, we're holding on for a long time. We have one, two, three, four, five, six bars of E7 
that we're staying on. With rosy cheeks, pearly teeth, and lovely nut brown hair before we go back to the A. So as you're on the E7, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 2, 3, 4, 3, 2, 3, 4, 4, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, 3, 4, 6, 2, 3, 4, A. And so that's that's a long time. But if you count, and especially if you can, it took me a long time to figure it out, but if you can count in that style where you're you're counting one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, you can kind of you keep the timer in your head and you and you're doing the count. And instead of just one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, I forgot what bar we're on, you can you can um, increase the number at the beginning each time. If you can in your head, and that will help you stay on track of knowing how long you need to be on that on that chord, right? Because if I'm just playing, how do I know that that's when I go back to A? I'm counting in my head, right? So I'm I'm keeping track of that lightly. And the the better you get the and the more familiar with the song you are, the more you can kind of forget about this as you go, but especially as you're learning, you want to make sure that you're giving the proper space because it's one thing to drop a beat or to move a note around, it's another thing to drop an entire bar because then then all of a sudden you're like losing whole words and whole parts of the the meaning of the song. Okay? So after we get to lovely nut brown hair on the A, that's just one, and then we're gonna do a very classic Hawaiian thing, which is make a quick turnaround back to the five. If you're in the key of A, you have A, B, C, D, four. I can't, my fingers don't work like that. Four, the four chord is gonna be the D, and then the five chord is going to be E or E7. So the one, four, and five are what we're playing in this song for our chord harmonies. And the five is gonna be that automatic kind of toggle chord the the sling slingshot chord it's going to send you back to the one again and that's kind of a classic hawaiian thing is that quick move back to the five so lovely nut brown hair two three four one two three four and then we go back to a right it's just a little a quick one bar movement to the e7 and back to the a and then for the rest of that page, the chord timing is going to be exactly the same. So we have one, two, three, four, D, two, three, four, A, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, D, two, three, four, two, two, three, and then E7, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, six, two, three, four, A. And then we turn around on the E7 once again, right? So that's the progression. That is kind of the outline and the bones of the harmony in the rest of the song. And once you kind of understand it as a structure, you can kind of kind of um, start to, to see how all these parts line up because they're these individual things. We talked about how to play the melody. Now we're talking about how to play the chords, but they all move along at the same pace in the same space and they all need to make sure that they're, you know, that anytime you check their alignment down the road, that they are aligned as opposed to, oh, I dropped the bar, so this is off. You got to make sure that all the parts are happening um, consistently across the song. All right, so the B part, it starts on A for two bars, and then we're going to E7, right? The Instead of following the same progression again, we're changing the progression because this is a different part of the song. We're playing a different melody. We're expressing a different kind of a feel. We're gonna use different chords to do this, all right? So we're gonna have my love for you. Uh, let, me, let me just play this B part so you have, have it in your head and then we'll talk about breaking it down. My love for you, uahiki akuno. Your love for me, who a pal I know. Don't tell mama, a cool cool, she'll tell papa, a lulu lulu, nui nui pilikia with me now. All right, a little bit more straightforward. We're not going to stay on anything quite as long, but there are a couple funky, funky timing things because we're playing. Usually you play things in chunks of two or three, or two or four or eight. Those kind of even even chunks, but in this case we have a, a five and a three 
to equal eight. And so we're moving the chord in the middle a little bit. So to start, we're playing on A for two bars. I love for you. And then E7. Da -da 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 -da. Your love for me. Okay, so from the A, we're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 2, 3, 4, E7, 2, 3, 4, 2, 2, 3, 4, 3, 2, 3, 4, 4, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, 3, 4, A. Okay, and then from there we have the, the three A bars, that's the five and the three combination there. So, uh, don't tell mama, coolie coolie. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, D, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That only gets two bars. And then we go to E7, two bars, one, two, three, four, A, two, three. And then we turn around on E7. And I know that this can seem like a lot of like chords and information, just like over overload trying to think about this. But really, once you once you play through it a couple of times and you kind of see how it's going and know what is where, makes it a lot more straightforward. And granted, this is not the easiest song to be trying to think of a chord progression in, from a rhythmic sense, like how many how many bars of each chord you're playing, because it changes. It would be a lot easier to do this with um, a strophic song, which is just verse, verse, verse. So it's going to be the same every single time. And a lot of times with the old school Hawaiian strophic songs, a couple of which we talk about in the course, like um, Nani Ka'ala and Aloha Kamanini, it's the same chord progression over and over and over again. So you get really familiar with it without needing to spend a bunch of time memorizing the progression. Whereas this one, it's, it's a little bit different in that B part. Okay, so... Altogether, my love for you, I'll count the whole thing and we'll um, and call out the chords as we go. So for counting in, one, two, three, four, A, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, E7, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, D, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, E7, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, A, two, three, four, E7, two, three, four. Right. So that is the chord progression. Um, what I would like to talk about, though, and I know what a lot of people always ask about is, what's the strumming pattern? And the answer is always, I don't know. Nobody knows. It cracks me up when people like teach the strumming pattern to a song because that's just one interpretation. Right? That's one person's way of how they played the song. But the way I've learned to play is you just you capture a little bit of what's happening, you capture a little bit of the magic, and that's just how it is. You'll probably play it that that way that one time, and then you'll never play it that way again. It's always gonna be changing a little bit. So what I like to teach people instead, instead of like, okay, so here's the strumming pattern. It's down, down, up, and then up, down, 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 up, up, down, down, X, chunk, up, down, chunk, chunk, right? It doesn't, that doesn't mean anything to anybody. And, and a, there's a lot of room to play it non-musically, in that sense, because you're trying to robot out this thing that somebody told you, it doesn't usually work in my experience. As soon as I teach somebody a strumming pattern, they start thinking about the strumming pattern and, and their movements just get all robotic and it's not natural. It's not a very human way of interacting with the ukulele. So let me give you a real crash course of how I think about strumming and how I like to present strumming to folks. And that is strumming on the grid. We've talked a lot about timing in this last little bit. The timing for the song is kind of one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, at that tempo, right? So if that's our count, we're always gonna be strumming down on the count if we're sticking with the grid. Down strums always happen on the count. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You'll notice that in order to strum down, I have to strum upwards in the middle, right? So down, my hand has to go up. There's, there's no, there's no conveyor belt of extra hands that are coming around to, to play those down strums. I have to move my hand upwards. So I end up playing down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. That's the movement to play down, 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 right? So when I'm playing on the grid, my hand is never deviating from this. 
down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay. If I was to add the middle strum, the upward strum, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. That is kind of more of the grid, right? And all it is is eighth notes. And you can get away with playing a lot of songs just with eighth notes. There's not really much more to be done. You might play a triplet here and there or a 16th note here and there, but that's an exception and you can break out of what you're doing as long as the rest of your rhythm is steady. If you don't got this, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and you shouldn't be trying to play anything fancy, right? This is most important because you can play 98% of stuff just with down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up on the grid. Because here's what makes the strums interesting is you're going to remove parts of the strum. You're not going to stop the motion, but you're going to take your hand away from the string so that you are physically moving your hand around the strings to miss a certain down strum or a certain up strum. But your hand's still doing this the whole time. I'm just ghost strumming, right? I can go one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and my hand's making the same motion whether I play or not. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. It's the same same movement. And I apologize if my audio is a little bit out of sync. I'm trying something new so the audio sounds better. But the other day when I checked, it was a little bit out. So this faster stuff might be a little, little bit off. Um, but let me let me try it slow so you can really, really not miss it. Okay. So if we're if we're counting slower, one and two and three and four and same thing. And two and three and four and one and two and three and four and you can play every other one you can create exercises for yourself so you get used to missing certain parts of the strum let's try that okay so let's play let's just start with if you want to follow along we'll start with just the basic grid which is down up down up down up down up one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and you should try and be able to do this until the cows come home do this in your sleep and stay on track one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. okay so the trick is missing missing intentionally so let's practice we'll play we'll strum on one and which is your down up for one and then we'll skip two and We'll strum, and by skip, I mean you're going to move your hand outwards away from the ukulele so that it's just a ghost strum. Your hand keeps moving. Your hand keeps moving. If your hand doesn't keep moving, it's easy to start roboting because you try and compensate and play the notes that you want, and then everything's off. If you keep your hand moving with the music, you can't play something that's out of time. It's impossible. Keep it moving with the music. You're always going to be in time. Okay? So we'll play on one and, three and. One and two and three and four and 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 right that's a way to practice kind of putting it in gear and then pulling it out of gear and putting it in gear and pulling it out of gear. And your hand's going to keep moving the whole time. So what does this have to do with Maui girl? Well, the first thing that it tells us is that if we're playing, if your tempo is, I love a pretty Maui girl, that's your downbeat. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That tells you how fast your grid is. So my grid's gonna be moving. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It's kind of fast, but that's that's the song. It's a fast song, it's a rousing song. Okay, so that's that tells you that this is gonna be your hand motion as you're playing the song. I love a pretty mom. So basically what I'm playing there, I'm not exactly playing 
down, up, down, up, down, up, straight the whole time. I'll, I'll play it like that as an example. One, two, three. I love pretty mommy girl. She lives at Wadi It sounds a little flat because there's not much interest. There's not accents. There's not movement. I'm not leaving things out because what leaving things out does is it creates dynamics. If you have silence and a loud strum, you have a difference between them. <clears throat> and the difference is the dynamics that you're imparting in the song. If everything's loud, you can't go up, right? You can't have more excitement in the song. But if you go quiet or silent for a minute, it kind of swings things so that when you go back to loud, it's like, oh, just a little, piques your interest just a little bit by being loud again. All right, so... As I play through the song, I'm not necessarily thinking, oh, play a strumming pattern, play a strumming pattern, and then repeating it over and over and over. I'm, I'm emphasizing places where I think the beat should be strong and places where it doesn't need to be as strong. And this has to do with how I'm feeling, how the words go, how I, you know, in, interpret the the rest of the music, how I, I play it forward and backward and, you know, push things and pull things it's, it's all a dance that's all all it is it's super super a dance and that's the main thing to understand about strumming is it doesn't have to be the same the whole time it's not a set strumming pattern it's an interpretation of the rhythm and you can do that if you keep your hand in time with the music it makes it pretty easy to do this okay so i'm just going to freestyle Listen for how when I, how I'm playing louder and quieter in places. It's all pretty much on the grid. I'm not I'm not doing any fancy strumming pattern. What I might be doing is dropping a strum. If I want to play two downs in a row, I'm not going to play. I'm not going to move where the down is happening. I'm just going to leave out the next up. I'm I'm going to ghost up in order to get two downs back to back. But I'm not going to move the down. The down's going to be in the same place. Okay, so just listen for that as I play through this. I'm gonna just kind of jam, jam it out. All right. Okay, so one, two, three. I love the pretty mountain. She lives at Waikapu with rosy cheeks, pretty teeth, and lovely nut brown hair. Is oh so slender. So I've got kind of a, a bob to my rhythm, right? I'm playing, I'm playing. It's all it's all on the grid. Jugu jaga, jugu jaga, jugu jaga, one and two, and one and two, and one and two, and one and two. But I'm kind of changing where the push is, right? Right? And I'm kind of swinging this this song kind of lives between between a swing and a straight. It's slightly, slightly swinging the way that I play it here. Um, but that's that's really all that's happening with a, with a strumming. If somebody tells you that a song needs a specific strumming pattern, approach their advice with high skepticism. That's what I say. Because really it's just an interpretation. And if you keep your hand moving with the rhythm of the song, you're going to be in really good shape for playing the strum. So I'm not going to necessarily teach you a specific strum for this song, but by practicing one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and and accenting certain notes, what you can do is you can play the X chord, just mute mute the strings, and practice accenting certain parts. Right, one and two and three and. And one and two and three and four 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 and one and two and three and four. Right? You can move an accent around so that you get used to playing accents in all the places available to you on the grid. And then when you go and you're playing a song and it's like, oh, it kind of kind of pushes here. I feel like I want to emphasize this spot. You can, because it'll be in your toolbox of playing a little bit harder here. The other thing that to do is to do the same thing, but instead of accenting, you practice removing a strum. You take it out of the grid, 
right? So if I'm if I'm playing one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and and one and two and three and that kind of a thing. That's not a super good example because I haven't done that exercise explicitly in a while. But you can you can practice rotating that so you get used to leaving things out. Um, I won't I won't go into super detail in this. I've I've talked about this at some point in another video, I think. Um, but what you can do, and this is a fun thing to do with a group of people, especially when I'm teaching, I try and try and get everybody playing along these lines is you pick three or four random numbers from eight from one to eight you pick three or four random numbers and you line those up with the eighth notes of the grid right and so those random numbers are going to give you specific places to play and you're going to play with your grid you're going to move your hand but you're only going to sound a strum where those random numbers occur so you can force yourself to generate random strumming patterns. And if you get used to doing that, um, I find that it's nice to have two even numbers and two odd numbers, because the the odd numbers are gonna be the downbeat, right? One lands on one, and the and is gonna be the upbeat. So if you have a mix of them, you're forcing yourself to play on beats and off beats, down, up. Right. And so that's super good practice. That's that's incredible homework practice. If you want something to take away from this and improve your strumming is to pick those random numbers and then assign them to their spot in the grid of eighth notes. You can practice that and it will. That's basically all the strumming patterns you need to know. They're all they're all in there somewhere. Right. It's just a matter of what combination of when you play and when you don't play are you going to use. OK. So, if you're just joining in, thank you so much. Um, I'm I'm watching the the chat roll by as people are posting stuff up. If you have any questions, throw it in there. Um, the PDF download is pinned to the top of the chat. It's also in the description if you want to download the handout and follow along. That's cool. Um, if not, just use your ears because especially this next part, we're going to talk about solo arranging. There's not going to be as much to gain from looking at the sheet. We're gonna be running off of what we've learned separately already, which is how to pick the melody, how to play the chords, and how we bring them together to create a solo arrangement, right? And the purpose of this live stream is, I'm just kind of celebrating my new video course, Hawaiian Songs for Ukulele. It's five Hawaiian songs explained and taught from kind of three different vantage points. We learn how to play the melody, we learn how to play the chords and pronounce the Hawaiian words, which is super important when playing Hawaiian songs, and how to play two versions of a solo arrangement. We talk about the basic version, which we'll probably spend most of our time doing here, and then kind of a more advanced version for advanced players who want to learn picking styles and whatever. There's a link in the description. You can check it out um, and get yourself those lessons if you're so inclined. If you want to learn Hawaiian music, it's a great place to jump in and I try and teach things and share share from a Hawaiian style kind of East meets West background of how I learned to play, which was very much just watch and learn and follow along and how a lot of my students like to think, which is where's the page? I wanna see the page. I wanna do it exactly how you tell me to do it. And so I'm trying to try to bring those worlds together so that there's a little so that maybe people who play only by ear will learn a little bit of structure and people who play only off the page or only exactly as they know it can maybe learn to play a little bit more intuitively and a little bit more by ear and bring things together in the middle, which is what I believe is kind of the, the happy medium if you can swing it. I think that that's the, the best way to kind of go about things. Okay, so if you wanna check out the lessons, much, appreci uh, much appreciated. Um, yeah, Live Ukulele has migrated away from ads, so it's ad-free now, and um, everything is just less than income. So <laughs> cheers cheers to going out a on a limb. Cheers to that. And let's talk about solo arrangements. Okay, so the trick with a solo arrangement is, let me let me play play kind of what I'm talking about for you so you can hear hear what I'm what I'm going to go on about. 
Solo arrangement is when you put the melody with the chords and it sounds like you're playing both parts on the same instrument. So for Maui Girl, Yes, chord melody. That is another term for it. Finger style ukulele, finger picking ukulele, chord melody, solo arrangement, any combination of those terms. That's what, what I'm going for. And that was kind of a rough example. I don't normally play the song strictly instrumental like that. It'll be more like a solo where I'm playing with the guys and, and it can be its own sort of a thing. But when you're playing by yourself, the idea is that you can accompany yourself as you play the melody. Right. So, yeah, yeah, that's that's basically it. But when you play a solo arrangement, the idea is that the human ear hears the highest note. If you play a chord, the most obvious note that your ear hears is because that's the highest note. Right. If I play a C chord, your ear hears. Just because that's how human hearing works, is you tend to hear the highest note in a chord. In a whenever there's a bunch of stuff going on, you hear the highest stuff easiest. So as a solo ukulele player, your job is to try and keep the melody as the highest note of whatever's happening. So your chords are going to pitch-wise go below the melody. All right. So a lot of times when you're playing solo arrangements, you're going to end up playing open chords. You're going to leverage as much of the lower bit of the ukulele as possible because that's going to give you more notes below your melody, but also kind of that full sound, which is the idea as you're playing solo because you don't have a guitar player or a bass player or whatever. Those are luxuries that a solo ukulele player does not have. Okay. So what, what I want to do as we work through this song is we'll just look at We'll look at the chord shapes we need to use to incorporate the melody above them. So the chords that we're going to use, we're going to use the same progression that we've been using in the song. So we have A for one bar, D for one bar, and then back to A. We're going to play the, that same chord progression. The difference is that we're, as we play the chords, we're also going to try and capture some of the melody notes in those chords as a strum. Okay, so... Let's try, and we'll just get started because it's one of those things that maybe doesn't make sense as I'm trying to explain it, but as, as we start working through it and you see it, it's going to become more obvious. So we start with, I love a pretty Maui girl. Right, just as a reminder, that's our melody. We're going to be playing over an A to get started for I love and uh. If I wanted to play love uh with the A chord, I would need to figure out a way to play A, but also keep the E note as my highest sounding note. So fortunately for us, as we get started, we can just play a normal A chord. So if you're playing A, you hold down A, the E note is already in there. The problem, some of you have already spotted this, I'm sure. The problem is that as you play this, the A becomes the highest note that you hear. We're no longer emphasizing our melody note, which we want to try and do, which is E. So what you're going to do is instead of playing a full strum on the A, you roll down just past the E string and let your thumb come to rest on the A string. Now the highest note, at least if you're playing, if you're playing on a low G, if you're playing on a high G, a lot of times you can also think of it as 
the last note that you play, if you roll into a chord, that last note, because you're moving towards it, is gonna also have the emphasis. So a lot of times high G players can get away with this style even if they don't have the melody as the actual highest note. You, you intentionally roll up to it so that it kind of becomes the more emphasized note, even if it's not the highest note. That'll make my life easier. So, rolling down the A with your thumb coming to rest on the A string. Rolling down the A chord with your thumb coming to rest on the A string. So, I love a... Uh, and for, for this bit, I'm just going to play a chord on every melody. This is not a graceful way to do this. It's kind of the brute force way of solo arranging, but it gets the point across of what we're trying to achieve here. So every time we see a melody note, at least for this first part, where it's kind of roomy, there's space between the melody notes, we're gonna try and figure out a chord strum for every melody. So the first one is gonna be our A, where we stop, stop our finger on the A string. And then we're gonna switch to D. So we need to hold a D chord and see where our melody lands, if it's even in the chord, okay? And in this case, if you hold a normal D, I tend to do the bar. You can also do the, the two finger partial bar or full three fingers if you like, whatever way is comfortable for you. Um, for pretty, we're gonna have the second fret on the E string as our lead melody note. D. So once again, your thumb's going to come to rest on the A string. So. And then for Maui, we go back to A. And our melody is again that E. So once you've figured out a couple of these chords, you can start to reuse them throughout the song. And it's not just a new chord every single time. You're going you're gonna to use them a couple times throughout the song. So once again, we can go back to Maui. And then for Maui, our melody becomes a C sharp, okay? And anytime the melody goes low on the instrument, it becomes harder and harder to harmonize a chord with it. Because at this point, if you have a low G, in order to keep the C sharp as the highest note, you only have the top two strings to play. So... What you wanna try and do, in, in this case it's all right because it's only moving downwards that low for a little part of the song. But in general, when you're arranging, you wanna try and keep the melody notes on the E string and the A string as much as possible. Preferably, you wanna keep them kind of on the A string because otherwise you're, you don't have a lot of room to harmonize below the note and keep the melody as, as the highest. So a lot of times you would transpose to a different key in order to kind of fit the window of the ideal solo arrangement range on the ukulele. Hello, autofocus. There we go, it came back. Okay, so if we go to Maui, we're just gonna play the two top strings, roll down so now your thumb stops on the E string. And then for the low G players, you can play the low note, or if you're high G, that's gonna pop up an octave for a girl. So I love a pretty Maui girl. Right, and for, for that pickup, you can strum there if you like. A lot of times I will just pick that. Right, and so that last note feels kind of bald after playing chord strums. That's why you would a lot of times transpose other songs up. But in this case, it's gonna be all right because we're just staying there for a little moment, okay? Now we move on to She Lives. That's an open A string over an A chord. So what you can do is you just play a full A because the full A chord contains the A string as the highest note on the bottom string. Okay, now this is the first time that we're kind of moving outside of a chord shape that we've been using. And all you're gonna do to capture the fourth fret and the second fret on the A string. To get that movement, all you're gonna do, if you have 
fingers to spare in whatever chord you're holding, you can just slap them on top. It, it makes it really easy when the melody notes on the bottom string because you can just add it. And then you don't really need to think about where you're starting or stopping. You can just put it on top of whatever chord you're already playing. So if we were to hold the A for she lives, she lives. I, I can reach my pinky up to the fourth fret. And then the second fret for Y, I've got my third finger on the second fret underneath the A. And then we go back to the open bottom string. And then for Y Kapu, we're moving over a D chord again. So we're gonna change our shape. And once again, we're on the F sharp melody so we can play that roll down like we used for Pretty. It's the same same chord movement, same chord shape and amount of strings we're playing. Okay, so that first line, it's gonna sound like this. Okay, and then from there, we're gonna go with rosy cheeks into E7. Okay, and so for this, we have to figure out what, what our game plan is here because we need to capture the fourth fret G sharp note. This is not a super easy one to grab. This is gonna be the probably the roughest part of the song. If you already know normal E7, and, and just FYI, everything that I'm sharing here is just that. I'm just kind of showing you options. And that's what I do in, in the lessons in the course is I show you how I kind of play it. But at the end of the day, I try not to give explicit directions for exactly how to play. I just kind of show you the idea, how I do it, and walk you through that. And then you can make your own choices of how you want to express the song. So same kind of thing here. That is what, what I'm trying to recreate is like a, a casual rough version in my messy bedroom of the course lessons. The course lessons are filmed on real cameras with two shots in my nice studio setup with nice lighting and everything. So this is this is the casual version, but the teaching idea is sort of the same of how we work through, you know, the, the style of teaching and, and the approach for each of these sections, whether it be melody, strumming, rhythm, or the solo arrangement. Okay, so for this for this part with rosy cheeks and pearly teeth, there's gonna be a lot of interpretation happening here because there's several ways you can do it. You could start, you can hold your normal E7 chord, one, two, zero, two. And in order to get the melody, you could reach your pinky up to the fourth fret and then stop your thumb on the A string. That would be one, one option. And then you can add your ring finger on the second fret. So as we play through, that would be one approach to harmonizing that section. Another one that comes to mind is, and, and a lot of times what option you choose is gonna revolve around what chord shapes you already know. I happen to know that this G sharp on the fourth fret of the E string fits within the top three strings of a normal E chord. So a lot of times people find E a difficult chord to play because there's that half bar and you gotta like either do this or this or all the fingers, it's it's kind of a contortion act and it's kind of tough. But in this case, we're playing a solo arrangement. We want the G sharp to be the highest note. So we don't need to play it like this. You can play it with your first finger just as a bar and your thumb comes to rest on the A string. Okay, and so from here, you could either play it like this and then to get the second fret, maybe you would end up playing it because you're gonna need, in order to continue holding other parts of an E7, you're gonna end up holding these two top notes from that shape and maybe moving your index finger down to the second fret. That would be one way to keep the harmony going for that entire line. But something I talked about earlier, I kind of touched on, is that with this bar, and with the flexibility of adjusting the melody 
to kind of be a little bit more loose. It doesn't have to be exactly as it's written or exactly as we think it, it needs to be. We can make it a little more bluesy by instead of playing the second fret for with rosy cheeks and pearly teeth, you could play the third fret. A lot of Hawaiian music utilizes chromatic notes that are wrong and outside of the key, but to great effect because it kind of moves things in and out of consonants to really add a lot of sass and interest to what you're playing. So this is one of those situations where I would probably do that. It's actually the easier way to play this because you can just play your E bar. <clears throat> You can even add a little strum for this part because you kind of have have a groove going as long as you're kind of muting that bottom string as you hold the E thing. And pearly teeth and, right? So with rosy cheeks and pearly teeth and lovely. And then for lovely, you'd go back to your normal E7 shape, or I would, because it gives you an automatic open E melody note. And then for brown, brown is kind of an awkward note with E7 and A, it's kind of low. So there's not a lot to harmonize with. If you were to harmonize below it, you'd have to use a note from an E7 chord. So it's either going to be the G sharp down here or the B here. That's kind of gross. So what, what I might do is in that certain spot, I might just pick the melody and not try and play a chord around it. So because there's there's chords on both sides, it's not like it's happening in a vacuum where it's just like a bunch of single notes all by themselves and there's no fullness. There's a lot of fullness on the edges, on, on the sides of what's happening to play one melody note inside of that. It's not a super big deal, okay? And then we go back to an A, okay? So from, from the beginning, from the beginning, let's try and play through that, or I'll play through it, kind of how we've talked about, follow along as you will. So from the top, kind of massaging it to make it work to make it easier to play and that's completely fine that that works um banjo lin asks can we use e7 with the second position which is this bar e we're talking about here and the f sharp note on the c string sixth fret absolutely when you're solo arranging you can move the melody to suit whatever is easiest with the chord shapes because this if you, if you want to play the second fret and the fourth fret, get the F sharp and the G sharp instead of playing the G natural. Instead of playing this, which is kind of awkward, um, they're talking about playing. And and in that situation, when you when you're using a higher note like that, it might not lend itself to. I mean, it kind of it kind of works. A, it doesn't super lend itself to being played as a chord because what happens is you're going from the E string as your melody note to the C string as your melody note. So every time you switch shapes, you're going to be targeting trying to not play a certain string in different place, right? So for this bar E, I'm strumming down to get the top three strings. But if I was to play this F sharp here on the C string, I only get to play the top two strings. If I play, if I play the top three, my G sharp note here is going to be covering that up. So that's a consideration to make. And, and all this is just considerations, right? There's a million ways to do this. There's no right way. It's just 
you know, figuring out what works for you. Some people's fingers do certain chord shapes better and you just kind of learn to work within those boundaries or, or go in the direction that's easiest for you to play. Um, so, so for this situation, instead of trying to go, which kind of changes, it changes the harmony a little bit in a way that personally doesn't resonate with me, but what we've been doing with strumming every single melody note is super overkill. You don't need to do that. So what I might do instead is you just play that one note that makes things a little bit more difficult. You play it by itself at just as a melody note because you don't have to play every melody. That's just one way to visualize it's a way for me as a teacher to get the most mileage out of one song and to showcase as many different ways of playing a chord and the melody at the same time as possible. That is that is what this is about. It's not necessarily that that's the best musical choice. It's that it's straightforward and you you get to see a lot of chords and how the chords work together with the melody. It's not necessarily musical, okay? Um, and then after that, basically the song repeats, right? The melody is pretty much the same. Um, the, the chords are going to be the same. So what we play as a solo arrangement is going to be the same, except what we can do, if you want, is instead of just straight repeating the first part of the song, I love a pretty Maui girl, she lives with Waikapu, instead of doing that again in exactly the same way, is you would change it a little bit to try and get some of the different melody notes going on for that part. Because, because of how it's sung, because the words are different, the syllables are different, the phrasing of the melody is going to be a different. Even, even though the melody is basically the same, it will be slightly altered in order to fit those words. Okay, But the movements we're going to make are going to be almost, almost the same. We're probably just going to add more picks in certain places. And in this case, it's pretty busy, so I might not just strum every single melody note that's kind of heavy-handed for this case so this is a nice place to start thinking about where you might want to play that chord strum in order to kind of get the most mileage out of playing the chord letting it ring letting and kind of sitting in that fullness where you're not necessarily feeling like you need to play another chord immediately okay so her waist is also slender. What I might do here, just to try something different, instead of playing every single melody note, let's play on the one. This is kind of a different approach that's similarly simple, but also more specific. Is every time we play the one beat, the beginning of the bar, let's try and strum the chord in that position. Otherwise, we'll pick everything. And if possible, you let that chord ring out. So her waist. It's the same as the beginning, so we're just going to hold the A, strum down through the strings. And then we go to D. Same thing, we've played this already, you're just going to roll through the strings. <clears throat> and then A. Okay, so let's listen to how different that is. As opposed to playing everything. It's a lot easier for the everything version to sound a little bit more clunky and a little bit more like it's less sophisticated. So in a lot of ways, playing just on the one or just in a specific spot where there's a gap that you want to add a chord strum can be more musically beautiful, depending depending on the song, depending on the situation, depending on how you like to hear it. But um, just for practice, from here to the end of this page, let's try and just play on the one. Okay, her waist. And then we don't have a melody note on the one of measure 20 here over the A, right? It's it's empty. You just have one, two, three, her, oh, poo, before, before you jump in with the melody. So in that case, when it's empty, even if it is empty, I would fill it in a lot of times with a chord strum because that's going to, it's going to make your rhythmic playing more consistent because you're going to be playing that strum in a consistent spot throughout the song one 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 you kind of get used to that pulse and how it interacts with the rest of the song but also by playing a chord strum 
You can change roles for a moment and become the rhythm ukulele player, fill that little gap, and it's never never going to be confused. If, if you do it right and you do it tastefully, it's not usually going to be confused as, oh, they're playing a melody note there. Right? It's not like I'm trying when I play um, slender, slender, her. I'm not, I'm not moving the her of the melody to the beginning of that measure. I'm just, I'm just filling that space by strumming a chord. So if there's a gap and a break and you still want to try and kind of keep your pulse moving along, then you can just strum in the space, play the chord in the space. Okay. So. Thanks for tuning in, Bob. Catch you around, man. Okay, so her opu. So we're just going to play a strum on the A and that space on the one. We're still over A. So when we get to the second fret there on the beginning of the 22nd measure, I guess it is, on much, too much. We're going to play this A again with just the A. A chord, the second fret on the bottom string. And that's a little bit awkward when we go to the D because you're trying to play on the one, but the one is an eighth note, so it's moving kind of quickly to what happens next. Nice thing is that when you hold the D, you have both of your melody notes ready to go, and you just need to grab them with your picking finger, whether it be your thumb or your index finger. So, um, her opu is too much in New England. So if we start, one, two, three. Sorry, we're not we're not strumming on the four. One, two, three. Right, we're gonna play the full D chord now because we're on the one there. But you gotta kind of abandon ship on that bottom string to get to the second fret of the E string, new E. And then once again, we have a blank, the blank beginning of a bar in between Nui. So from her opus too much a Nui Nui, I'll play through that bit. And then we go to the E7 and we're gonna be trying to capture the fourth fret G, once again, with an E7 chord, couple options here that I hear. Ah, uh, boy, my voice is not used to talking for this long. We will be on the fourth fret. <clears throat> you can play the normal E7 around it. Roll your thumb down to stop. You could go back to the bar. A version that I like to use is this. So it's four, two, four on the top three strings. This also has an E7 chord shape. For me, it captures maybe more of the, the vision of an E7 chord while also getting the melody note. It's kind of real, just a slick sound. And I kind of, I kind of dig it. Um, so, A little bit tricky to move to and from um, but if you can it sounds nice otherwise use whatever version you want you could do this one that kind of a thing Remember, we're just trying to capture that that um, fullness of playing on the one and then let it ring through the measure as long as possible okay so of all the wahine I ever did aloha we're going to do pretty much the same thing. And then when we get to Sweet Mariah, we're moving to the open E as our melody. I would probably just strum the top bit of a normal E7 chord. And then we need the second fret of the E string, the F sharp note. I would probably just cheat that into my F, my E7 chord. Okay, so from of all the vahine, I'll play from there.
and then we have an E7 um, vamp. That's the word. I'm starting starting to get a little tired here, man. This is demanding this marathon live stream stuff. We, I would probably play the E7, even though there's no melody happening there and you don't really need to imply anything. A lot of times when there's large breaks, I'll kind of imply a strum so that people can still follow along with the chord progression and the rhythm. You don't want to just leave them out in the cold as somebody's listening to the song because they won't know what's happening. If you just play, da, 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 da. you know, there's no indicator of what's going to be happening next. So if you go, um, Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play from from the top. I love a pretty Maui girl and change the solo arrangement style so that I'm only playing on the one as best as I can. I'm sure I'll mess it up, but um, only playing on the one beat and kind of creating that little bit more open sounding arrangement because you can you can make an arrangement as dense as you want and just strum the whole thing but it's not always the best approach a lot of times a little bit of finesse can sound better especially if you're patient and you're not scared to leave some space <clears throat> okay so That's not super precise. I, I kind of goofed up in a couple of places there, but that's okay because that's just sort of how I'm interpreting it, interpreting it in the moment. And you're free to do the same. That's not like they hand out some sort of certification to me and say, you can do whatever you want. Everybody's able to experiment and try playing things however they want. And so hopefully between the melody and between the strumming and the chords, and then a little bit of an idea of how to put them together into the solo arrangement, you can come to your own conclusions and figure out how you want to do things. Maybe these chords sound boring to you. You want to use jazz chords. You can do that. There's nothing, nothing at all that says you have to follow along exactly as this is laid out because it's, you know, very, very much an open book. And that's the beauty of music, right? That's why a lot of us play is just so we can express ourselves. And if you play it only in one specific way every single time, it gets a little boring. It gets a little static. And especially with Hawaiian music, all the, the great Hawaiian music players that I know, they never play anything the same way twice. It's always something different. Every time you hear it, it's a little bit different. So really, you get to know you get to know the song. You get to know the, the bones of the song, not necessarily the entire arrangement or the entire performance. The only way you can really listen to Hawaiian music the same way again is by listening to the CD. And I, I know um, I've heard guys talk about how the, their audience is frustrated when they go tour in Japan because they're used to hearing like they're used to dancing hula to the recording and it's the same every single time. And I guess that that's a very Japanese thing is they expect to hear it in that kind of consistent manner. And so when the guys go and they play and it doesn't sound quite like the album because they're just kind of improvising because, you know, it's not the same exact take from that recording everybody's like well you didn't play it like the album um so it just it just kind of an, an interesting dynamic there but definitely don't feel like you have to play things the same way every time in fact you'll learn more if you try it all the ways every every time you play it if you try something a little bit different you'll be learning more things and instructing yourself um kind of better in that sense so let's have a quick look at how the b part would go in a solo arrangement. It shouldn't be too complicated because there's a lot of pedaling on the same notes. Um, in this case, we start 
we're not playing on the one, so I'd probably just add a, a bonus strum in there on the A. And in that case, we have Uhikiaku no, and the, the melody that I wrote down is to go to the first fret. But in this case, I'm holding an E7. That feels way too complicated for me. I'm feeling like I want to be able to just kind of cruise and play this easy style. What I might do instead is... I'm going to cheat the C sharp to the second fret and play the D note instead because it's one of those things. Like as I'm singing it... I mean, it is a C sharp, but you could really easily, as the ukulele player, play in a solo arrangement version. No one's ever going to notice. That's one of those places where you can kind of bend the rules a little bit and play a different melody, even though usually you want to try and keep the melody sort of the same. There are moments when it's less defined. You can kind of whoop, cut a corner. Okay, so my love for you. Right, and, and here I'm, I'm just kind of uh, figuring it out as, as I go because there's a lot of ways you could approach this. It's really busy in this part. The melody moves around a lot and there are many different things happening. Um, from Uapela No. case you have uh, for Nui Nui Pili Kia, the melody goes to the fourth fret on the E string. That Once again, you can play your bar. A lot of your consideration is going to be kind of what comes ahead and what's after. A chord shape may be great for a situation, but it doesn't have any bearing on what you've already played or what you're going to play next. And a lot of times that will tends to guide you towards what answer you want to come up with for a certain given spot. So if I'm playing for a Nui Nui Pilikia, I'm going to tend to be here. So I might just want to play from the normal E7 and just reach up, right? I'm, I'm kind of in saving energy mode with this interpretation of the song. I don't want to get too, too super duper crazy because if, if I play it I have to make a hard chord change there to play that version or same with the bar i would have to jump and make a little bit of a movement or whereas i can just kind of stay in my zone and conserve that energy and still get pretty much the same effect all right so that is the solo arrangement. If you have any questions or thoughts, please throw them up in the chat. Um, it's really it's really not as complicated as people make it out to be. They make it out to be kind of this scary thing like, ooh, solo arrangement, finger style playing. It's like it's so advanced. There's not much to it. It's just kind of figuring out the best ways to slam those two worlds together and how, how to play them where you're not you're not killing yourself trying to actually physically play it on the instrument. And you're also making it so that it's kind of musically relevant to what you're trying to express. But when in doubt, keep it simple. Just like play on the one, play on the one, or sometimes you'd play on like the one and the three would be a little, maybe if it's a slower song and you want to have more, more fill kind of around the melody that you're playing. If it's slow, this playing on the one thing might it might draw out too long. You lose the sustain of the chord. It doesn't quite work as well, and you want to play again. That's fine. Play again and play in places where it makes sense. If you have if you have a a, a bar where the melody moves, I don't I don't know. Just, I'm just making something up here. But if you're playing in the key of A and you have a, a melody that goes like that. 
if I'm strumming and I want to play, it doesn't make any sense to not play the easier version of the chord or the more natural in sync version of the chord where the note already naturally occurs, right? If I play, if that's my melody, you know, why would I, why would I go to the extra? It's not really extra work because I'm already playing it. But sound wise, I'm not sure I want to emphasize that as my harmony sound. I'd rather have this. It sounds a little bigger, a little bit fuller, at least in my ears, right? Your, your interpretation might be different. But if there's a place in the measure where you have a built in note from the chord shape you're already playing, you might as well play that because it's going to be easiest. It's going to be the most consonant. It's going to sound the biggest usually for that situation in the solo arrangement. Okay, so I know I said I would talk about the Hawaiian words that are in this song. There's not a lot, a lot to know, but um, we will dig through it, right? Opu is your belly. Um, opu, too much. And then Nui Nui is like large. Um, I've, I've heard that this song is about, um, a guy who gets a girl pregnant. And so Mariah, is, her opu is too much anui nui. Uh, wahine is woman. Aloha is love. Sweet Mariah beats them all. And then for the B part, there's a little bit more, um, a little bit more Hawaiian lines. It's, it's extended phrases a little bit here. Ua hikiaku no. Um, ua is like something that's happened in the past or come to being. <clears throat> and hiki is can. So it's like, it's yes, <laughs> yes, can. Um, and then aku and no are just sort of, um, aku is directional and no is an intensifier. So these things, these aren't all, hiki is really the only easy thing that you can translate um, literally in that in that sentence I, I think the my love for you is like duh my love for you i love you it's kind of that is sort of my interpretation of that line your love for me ua pela no pela 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 where is my hawaiian dictionary this is the kind of stuff that a um a Hawaiian musician does all the time is they they're not sure so they look something up and you just make sure that you know or or to re-remember what the words are make sure that you're um sharing the correct meaning as you go through it um pela is like in that way like that thus so Wapela no so it's like it's been said that that's the way it is your love for me that's the way it is um and then once again, don't tell mama. Mama is just mom, mother, kind of a Hawaiianized version of mama. And then kuli kuli, kuli kuli. What what is kuli kuli? Um, I highly recommend if you are interested in Hawaiian music to get yourself a copy of the Hawaiian dictionary. It is it is so important. And if you don't have that, you can go on vehevehe.org. Vehevehe.org is a really great website that's it's basically the online dictionary all of this is on there but i like to have the the book coolie coolie noise din noise noisy deafening be quiet keep still shut up <laughs> coolie coolie don't tell mama Shh. she'll tell papa a luli luli and luli luli is another one these like this kind of song the the meaning of what's going on is like Kind of, kind of straightforward already. You don't think to look up these kinds of words, <clears throat> but it's fun. It's really it gives a lot of meaning to um, to what's going on. Luli, luli, agitated. She'll tell Papa a luli, luli, and I imagine in that sense the ah means like ah in Hawaiian it can be like until. Until so she'll tell she'll tell papa and then he's agitated. She'll tell papa a luli luli. 
Nui Nui Pilikia with me now. And once again, big and then trouble. Pilikia is like trouble. So make make plenty of trouble with me now. Or we're in trouble now. So it's it's a fun song. Um I hope you enjoyed kind of working through it. This is this is a style that I wish I wish more songs were taught in this way where it's kind of like in sections, but also very patient about, about going through the song because when you learn something just note for note, you only learn that one, that one version of the song. Whereas if you learn the components to a song, it kind of becomes like, you know, your tools, your tools to assemble the song in your own way. You, you have the skills and you know what the bones of the song is. It's like moving into a new house. Like the house is the house. That's the song. Where you put your furniture, what kind of paintings you put on the wall, that's up to you. You decorate it in your own way. And that's kind of, you can think of the song like that. It's like, you're not just going to live in an empty house. Or if somebody's taught you the song one way, their empty house, right? It's it's really nice to, to make it your own. Change it, organize things as you see fit. The main thing to remember as you're working through a song is that the melody, the melody is kind of the king. You don't usually want to change the melody much. And you usually don't want to dramatically alter the harmony unless you're going for, especially with Hawaiian music, because so many of these songs are classic pieces, not so much this song, because it's a Hapa Haole thing, and that's kind of like all bets are off. But like if you were to arrange one of the Queen's songs, classic song that was, you know, written by Hawaii's Queen, you wouldn't really want to mess with changing it too much because, you know, that could be seen as, you know, not not very tasteful to to change something that's so classic, that's so already beautiful. And especially especially if you are a white person, you know, you don't you don't want to already to change something that is one of the, the few things that Hawaii does have culturally left is the music. Um so, so you got to tread tread carefully as far as changing the melody or the harmony too much. But when it comes to arranging, like deciding how you want to play a chord shape, how you want to play the rhythm of the song, how you want to push it along, where you want to play chord strums, where you want to just pick the melody. And then also like the intros and outros of a song that you might want to play. I'm not... This is one of few songs where I'll just count in and start the song. I'll be like, one, two, three, four. I love a pretty. But usually, usually you kind of dilly dally a little bit before you jump into the song. So you might play. I love a pretty. And that little intro can be anything you want. That's not an actual part of the song. So that's up for interpretation. If you wanted, you could do, um, do something kind of crazy like. A pretty Maui girl, right? You could do that kind of a thing. You could make it um, make it more jazzy. You could go. I love a pretty Maui girl. She lives at one cup with rosy cheeks, pearly teeth, and a Right, you could you can change the harmony, you can change your presentation of the song as much as you want, as long as the general harmony and the melody stay the same. All right. So I think I've reached pretty much the end of what I have to share about the song. Thank you so much to everybody who's tuning in. Um, this was kind of <clears throat> in celebration of my new video lesson course, Hawaiian Songs for Ukulele. There's a link down in the description if you want to check it out. It's on sale, $10 off the list price, the MSRP, um, until tomorrow at midnight, at which point it will go up to the, the normal price. So if you are interested, check it out. Jump on into those lessons. There's a comment section for each lesson, so you can ask questions. There's also a forum that you have kind of started a forum section on the site for members. So if you have like a video of the song that you want to share or you want feedback on something, you can post it there and we can provide feedback. Um, there's five songs that we work through kind of in this style. There's a, a melody video and a chords, pr chord progression and chord strumming 
video lesson. And then there's kind of a basic solo arrangement, sort of like we did today. And then an advanced version of the arrangement where I talk about more advanced technique of how you can express the song in a more advanced way. Um, but there's there's something pretty much for every level of player, unless you're a super duper newbie. But if you're a super duper newbie, you probably didn't make it to the, this far into the stream. Um, so, so yeah, and and there's backing tracks. That's one of the the more exciting parts of the course. Is each song has 16 backing tracks, I think, <clears throat> um, and with different variations of different instrumentation. So if you want to practice picking the melody, you can take listen to the version that doesn't have the vocal. I, I recorded the um, the tracks here in my studio. Uh, it's full production. There's like bass and ukulele and some steel guitar solos, ukulele solos and stuff. And um, and really presented the songs as, you know, maybe you'd hear them on, a, on an album, actually like a, a real recording. And then I just took out certain tracks so that if you wanted to play the melody, you could listen to it without the vocal so that you're in charge of the melody and you, you hold up that part. There's a part, uh, a version without a strumming track so you, you can hold up the strumming and listen to me sing and kind of get used to being the main rhythm player a bunch of different variations and if you need anything specific i'm happy to um, create a custom version and upload that for you um if you have any questions about the course or anything we talked about here um please feel free to shoot me an email brad at livukulele.com and yeah happy to answer those thanks to everybody for tuning in um, let's see, let's see what the chat's got for our last, last little bit, if there's anything I'm missing. Thanks, Tom. I love my more better too. Oh, glad to hear that this lowered the stress of working out chord melodies. Yeah, it can, it can be kind of overwhelming. Um, I think especially when somebody gives you a very exact arrangement. That's why I kind of like, I present it as, okay, here's the lead sheet. Here's the information that you need to know. You have the chords, you have the melody. And then I show you how you can go about putting them together in your own way. And then it's kind of just like, you know, maybe you have your coffee, you're waking up and you're putting it together just like you're working on the crossword puzzle or something. It's kind of, it's kind of a puzzle that you can take your time on and that it's uh, hopefully more relaxing than like, oh, gosh, I got to learn to play it somebody else's way. You can do it however you want. And that's that's really what I want to em emphasize. There's there's no right way to do anything that I talked about today. All right. So thank you so much for tuning in. Um, really appreciate it. I had a good time. This was fun. And yeah, if you're interested in the course, please check out the link in the description. And I will catch you all next time and in those lessons. Until then, aloha no.